welcome to Thought Sauna. This is a podcast where we talk about weird dreams, odd laws, and interesting thoughts. I'm Brett Rotten Apples Archaeologist Hanrahan. Ooh. I have unearthed the archives of the Rotten Apples, and slowly, slowly, I defossilize and uncover the hidden mysteries of the band. Soon we're going to have a documentary, a Thoughts on a documentary about it. That's right. I, yep. I have their second album that I did not know existed until like three weeks ago in in my and hands. You ordered it from Fol- and then you ordered it from Poland. Yes. And the, <laughs> the, the only way I could get it was from a guy in Poland. And it had like three scratches on the cover already. So that's a good sign. It might be a cursed CD. I guess we'll see. Well, the last one was cursed too, right? So it makes sense. And it's me. I'm Samuel Redacted. That's it? You're just... (laughs) (laughs) Samuel Redacted? (laughs) The greatest, like, first couple minutes to an episode. (laughs) What happened, Sam? What happened to your last name? It got redacted, dude. I'm not I know allowed. it got redacted. <laughs> what happened to make it redacted? Well, you see what happened is just... Oh, okay. I see. Okay, I, see, this, I, see I see. Yeah. I get it. Wow. This and was, then just... I, I just... I haven't been able to say my last name. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that was a long and very interesting story, and it's too bad we won't get to it. But right now we have to get to our third co-host. Yeah, man, you should have been there. That's me. <laughs> Cyan full of allergies. Haskins. I... Oof, that's a mood. Thank you, Winston. And also Winston, our fourth Winston. and final host. Yeah, the dog. Yay. Um, real. I'm going to take care of that real quick. And we're back. Winston has been silenced. Well, he hasn't been silenced, but he's put further away <laughs> from the microphone, so now hopefully he will be heard less. Uh, yep. With that being said, I am Cyan Allergetic Haskins, and I am so full of allergies. Also going to take a quick moment to assess it on the podcast, uh, just for saying it only once, because I don't like saying things numerous times. I'm going to fully, 100% go by Lily now. Oh, dang. Oh, okay. So this is the last okay. time I'm Cyan Haskins on the podcast. Woo! Uh, all right, all right. I've been going by this name for like a year and a half. Uh, just by both of them, and I decided that I don't want both of them anymore. So, right. that's how it is. Okay. Uh, and it's not going to be like a dead name, so if y'all fuck up, I don't, I won't get mad. But Lily is... But right. I'm throwing Definitely. it out there that this is my full real name now. All right. You, you'll have to give me, you'll have to give me a little bit because me dumb, but... No, yeah, like I don't, it's not like I'm going to get pissed off. <laughs> oh, no. You, <laughs> or anything, no, I like, I don't give a fuck. All right. What what Lily, caused Lily, this change? Lily, was there like Lily, a moment Lily, or was it just like, I'm Lily. tired? It, it's just kind of like a, I never felt a strong connection to that name to begin with. And over the years, it's just felt less and less of a connection. And when I look at myself, I'm like, I don't really look like a cyan, do I? I, I look like a That's lily. Fair. I feel like a lily. That's cool, man. Yeah. And it you suits, are. It suits you. It suits you. Just to clear all the misconceptions, it, you are named after the Alpha and Omega character, yes, Lily. Yes, to go ahead and get rid of any like assumptions, uh, <laughs> it is an entirely... Uh, and here's the thing, that this is the honest truth. <laughs> here's the thing, that this is like the actual honest truth. When I was a senior in high school, uh, I, I the first person I asked was the person I was dating at the time. I was like, hey, can you start calling me this? And it was because of Alpha and Omega, and that's what started it. Yep. So. Yep. Two years later, it's a hundred percent my name. And and it's, it's it's been I and it's from Alpha and Omega. I was, yes. I was absolutely thinking of like the type of flower, and now I feel dumb. Well, that's why everyone spells it with two L's when it has three L's. L I L L Y. Three. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, not three in a row, but not just three in there. <laughs> There's yeah, three that's total what confused L's. me. We're at five minutes in. Well, for, okay, first, two things. Uh, I, my name is Brett because there's a bear named Brent in the Alpha and Omega series, and I wanted to be named after him, but not entirely. Uh, second thing, you did voice Lily in the Alpha and Omega series. That was me, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you named the character, and then when you named the character, you were like, hey, actually. So voice actors... Well, well, voice actors and voice actresses named the characters. You were a very special member of the cast, remember? 
Yes. They gave you a lot of creative freedom. Yeah. Actually, it was weird. You know, they just hired you as a voice person. They're like, well, don't you? Hey, come on, get in the writing room. Yeah, go ahead. Produce get it. Get in here. Yeah. Directed. <laughs> so for all the credits, Lily Haskins will be up there. Yeah, I am actually, yep. uh, like, they're all aliases. Every name on the credits are aliases. Yeah. And they're all actually me. I made the entire movie single-handedly. <laughs> <laughs> and the franchise. All the sequels. <laughs> oh. All seven of the actual real sequels that I own on DVD. Yep. That's that's later. That's for our Alpha and Omega dedicated with, podcast. With that being said, uh. let's get to our first segment, which is my thought. This comes from Marchillo or Marchio. <laughs> Hit me with your best shot. Hit me with your best shot, Brett. Here we let's go, see Sam. what you got. Here we go. From Reddit, Marchio. They say, the, per- the first person who inhaled helium must have been so relieved when the effects wore off. Oh, God. Oh, man. Could you imagine... Just, like, the panic of, like, oh, no. Like, first of all, you you wonder, how. Did, first of all, how did they get helium? Yeah, who and thought to, like... Second of all, who was like, you know, what would it, What if I inhaled this? It was probably some college student who was trying to get high. <laughs> and helium was like, oh, you know what? This come, we, we can just buy this at the store to fill balloons. It's a gas. So we yeah. can probably get high off of it. Like whippets, you know? The, the cops are so stupid. Yeah. They have no idea that this is going to get us high, dude. Idiot. Ha! Ah! Are, you, are you okay? No. Sam gets stabbed? I just... Is there like a spider in your room? What? <laughs> okay. Okay. So I just... I was, I'm doing some research on it, and I was like, how was helium discovered? And so I'm reading it. It says, helium is the, mo- is the second most abundant element in the universe. But here on Earth, it's rather rare. Most people guess that we extract helium from the air, but actually, we dig it out of the ground. Uh, what? Oh. Ha- Wait, so we have like a limited amount? Helium can be found in certain parts of the world, notably in Texas. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> We're on a helium mine? As a minor component in some sources of natural gas. <gasps> Dude, we're just sitting on a landmine of just of richness Whoa. and helium. Fuck the California gold rush. It's time for the Texas helium rush. Holy shit. <laughs> Let's get digging. We've just spent all this time wasting our time digging up oil. Yeah, fuck oil. We have helium here. We got helium now. It's as as precious as gold. Okay, I just. But now that I found out, it's it, you can dig it out of the ground. I just think of like, what if these miners are like digging for coal or like gold and whatnot, and they turn to him and they go, "Hey, Jimmy, you found something." <laughs> You're like, "What the fuck's wrong with your voice, dude?" I feel a weird pressure over here. I don't know what happened. I think I breathed something in. <laughs> they they dig a hole like you, okay uh as usual i will breathe i will suck in the air from the hole to make sure i'm the poison tester to make yeah, sure I'm the, the air poison tester <laughs> then, yeah it fixes everything oh my god what the what, ah <laughs> we're good guys we're good like having a breakdown like i can't sound like this forever i can't sound like this forever <laughs> i can't sound like oh okay Ooh. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, oh. That was scary. <laughs> okay. I remember. Okay. So like miners use those like poison detector pigeons, right? They would like, or like canaries that they would carry in cages. Yeah. Yeah. Does helium make a bird's chirp higher pitched? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, does, yeah. Does helium work on other, it must work on animals and stuff. Yeah. But what, I mean, what would that even sound like? Ah! What? Well, you know how birds are like ah. When birds become Chance the Rapper. Yeah. <laughs> I think think about now though, right? <laughs> and that's what a bird on helium would sound like, or maybe a hyena. Uh, I, I Google does helium work on animals, and. There's a video that says my dog sucked in helium and it's like a black lab and it sounds like a puppy. Aww. It's like a fully grown black lab. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to look that up yeah, later. Yeah, for sure. I want y'all to imagine 
uh, in the future mm-hmm. when helium is a very valuable resource we're texas we're mining it uh we we dig in someone goes in they come out and like we struck gold <laughs> <laughs> and then like everyone's like yeah yeah, as a he- as a helium slowly rises out of the cave, like everyone else starts <laughs> inhaling it. Everyone in Texas starts getting a helium voice. Man, the great Texas helium bubble. <laughs> Man, Brendan Yuri and Ariana Grande are gonna freak out when they find out. Oh my god! About the helium. Could you even imagine? <laughs> <laughs> they are gonna nut so hard. Jesus. I think Ariana Grande's voice might actually go into a range beyond human hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Straight up. Maybe though, maybe the helium doesn't just seep into our lungs. Maybe it seeps into our ears as well, in our noses. So maybe we have a heightened sense. We can hear that higher frequency. Whoa. Yeah, like if we all just like You lost me at nose. No, you know, if you can breathe in a higher pitch. You can if you can breathe when you speak you're in a higher pitch. So when the helium goes in your ears, you can hear at a higher pitch. <laughs> and if it goes in your nose, you can smell at, at a, a higher you can pitch. smell your sense of smell is more sensitive to the subtler well, things. I do have some good news. Helium is non-flammable. <laughs> well, that's good. Okay. My entire search history is just filled with these long questions about helium. But now. also, if you like breathe in a lot of helium, don't you just like suffocate and die? Yes. So yes. that that that'll just be called the Great Big Texas Nap Time of 2018. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how to eradicate an entire state. Yeah. Just dig up all the helium and we all fucking suffocate. Hey, man, you know, we talk about the end of the world. We talk about the sun exploding, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It could just be a bunch of helium seeping up from the the <laughs> ground. Yeah, we could just accidentally, like, mine a little too deep and hit a giant yep. helium pocket. And we're going to be the first ones to go. Like a helium volcano. Yeah. Waiting to erupt. <laughs> exactly. Texas, Texas just starts to float off the earth. <laughs> We just, you just see a Texas, just, it looks exactly like Texas, and it just rises, and we just go into the stratosphere. It's like the border of Texas. Yeah. Like, somehow the helium knows. Yeah, the helium knows, like, where we drew our border. (laughs) Uh, Let's, how about this? How about we float on to our second segment? Ooh. All right. Sam. All right, I bring the law from Pennsylvania. The and law this one, brought by the Samuel Redacted. <laughs> this one is <clears throat> interesting in of how they worded it, and also it's just an interesting law. Uh, it is contrary to Pennsylvania law to discharge a gun, cannon, revolver, or other explosive weapon at a wedding. Hmm. Now, Repeat? the wording is what really hooked me because I like that they said it is contrary to Pennsylvania law. As if they couldn't just say it's against the law. It sounds like some kind of lawyer made them reword the law so there could be a loophole somehow. Yeah. There's got to be a loophole. Reread that law. I need to like absorb that again. Yeah. It is contrary to Pennsylvania law to discharge a gun, cannon, revolver, or other explosive weapon at a wedding. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. But... My first question is, why specifically a wedding and not just every In general. Yeah. How about... You can't do that anywhere, actually. Anywhere. How about that? (laughs) You can go to the supermarket. You could fire off a couple couple congratulatory shots from getting those coupons. You can set off a couple explosives. You can at the fire park. your cannon a couple times. You know, just as like, yay, I got savings. Yeah, at the funeral, you know, you can fire your <laughs> yeah. cannon, pull out your Glock at the dog park, but at a wedding, mm-mm, don't even think about it. Hey that. guys, I brought my cannon to the the uh, wedding. I hope that's okay. No, you better keep that so in your purse. You know that's, 
<laughs> yeah, Doug, you know that's against the law. Keep that in your car. Come on. You know, ever since those pirates came and raided my wedding, you know that you know we haven't been about that. <laughs> they stole all my treasure. Arg, arg, and that's what they said when they stole. It. They said arg, because you know how arg. Pennsylvania, <laughs> full of pirates. Yeah, that's where all the pirates live. That's where all the pirates live in Pennsylvania. Shooting their cannons and explosives and just raiding the wedding booty. They stole my crock pot that I got. They as stole a gift. my toasters. No, <laughs> all three of them that I got. Y'all couldn't have, like coordinated what you were. I have three toasters now. <laughs> I don't need three toasters. I actually kind of. I was really glad when the pirates took two of the toasters. Like we already had some. Like we have a house. We've been living together. You know. <laughs> It wasn't even on the on the list of gifts that we wanted. <laughs> y'all just y'all all got three toasters. Every single one of you every got person, us three toasters. Every per okay, so like collectively three toasters, or each person got their three individual toasters. Yeah. So they get like forty toasters. And if the they end. had a if they had a plus one, the plus one also brought three toasters. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand why y'all did this. Like even the family, the people like in the, all the bridesmaids. Yeah. Exactly. Their gifts were also three toasters. Maybe the toaster pirates came in. This is like a shitty prank. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel today. <laughs> the toaster pi pirates from Michael Bolton's retirement home in Alberta. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. I, I didn't remember where the pirate retirement home was. I was hoping it was Pennsylvania, but Alberta. No, it's Alberta. Damn it. But how far is Alberta from Pennsylvania? Far. To, it's far it's in it's far. a different it's but i the, know it's in a different country yeah the toaster pirates are ruthless yeah in their writing and so they did fire off a couple warning cannons Ooh. to Ooh. get those Al alberta canada is like on the other side of the united states or like on the like western side yeah yeah my question is who brought the cannon to a wedding and then like they were like that's it no more cannons. Do you think it was the same person who first they brought, you know, like a pistol and then they brought some dynamite and then they brought a cannon mm. just to just to get on the lawmakers nerves. And they had to specifically every single time like, yeah, OK, no cannons allowed now. It's like, ha, ha, ha. Well. I like I like that. It said it's it like you can kind of see how this law developed where they're like, all right, you can't bring a gun to a wedding. And they were like, all right. And then they're like. I brought this one. They're like, that's a, that's still a gun. He's like, no, it's a revolver. And they're like, it, all right, you can't bring okay, revolvers to a right. wedding. <laughs> it's like, no and cherry then, bombs, no electric wires. Yeah. <laughs> and then the dude brought a cannon, and they're like, that's just a bigger gun, dude. And he's like, it's a cannon. And they're like, it, well, you can't bring that to a wedding. And then finally, like, he showed up, and they're like, before you even say anything, if it involves an explosive device <laughs> in any way, you cannot bring it. And he just emptied out his pockets, and there were like ten different things that he had brought to this wedding. That each was a different type of explosive. This guy sucks. Fuck yeah, fuck this yeah. dude. Why is this guy going around every single wedding he can for this? <sighs> he maybe he's one of the toaster pirates incognito. He's clearly not very incognito if he keeps getting caught and making this law about him. Yeah, and that wouldn't. Hmm. It's just sometimes there are these laws and they're so specific yet so vague. God, I wish yeah. there was some kind of way we could see how these things were put. What event prompted these laws? But I guess yet again, it's it falls on it's us. Our, it's our job. That's our why we have this podcast. Yeah. Every time you ask that, you just reinvent thought sauna and realize we're already we're in the middle of <laughs> we're doing yeah. that right what now we're someone to needs to someone needs to figure this out and it's like brett that's what we came for. yeah i think it was just some douchey guy i think it was just some douchebag who kept like well this one's technically not like you know he didn't yeah, even they have so many specific specific things and they're like if it could any way be classified as somewhat explosive it's gone and he was like, man, you guys are bud buzzkills. And you're like, no, you're the buzzkill. You're the one bringing weapons. No, man, we just don't want to die at a wedding. That's it. Like, man, it's... Why, why, why do you need this here? <laughs> yeah, why do you need like, this in your life? You don't need a gun 
at all. Like, first off, you don't need a gun at all. Second off, you don't need a gun at a wedding. What are you gonna do? Shoot someone if they come in yelling, I object? That's part of the wedding, dude. That's part of every wedding, is the yeah. guy who says, I object. <laughs> Sh Shrek runs in yelling, I object, and yeah. it's just part of the wedding. Here's the thing, though. No dragons are, f are yeah. prohibited. Well, it's entirely dependent upon your answer. If you laugh and make fun of Shrek, the dragon comes and eats you. If you truly do love your bride, Shrek approves the wedding. Yeah, and cool. that's just a common... That's just what happens every just, single time in Pennsylvania. People have tried to stop Shrek. Pennsylvania is a scary state. They've, <laughs> this is the only state that shit goes down, and this scary. shit doesn't happen to you. It's <laughs> terrifying. Shrek comes into your wedding. No, every single time, he's like, I object. He's like, yes, Shrek, we know you object. But he's still scary, so people have tried to fend him off with handguns and explosives. But it doesn't work. It just makes him angrier. Yeah, and it results in unnecessary casualties from the wedding guests. All right, I'm so glad we finally... We finally got to what actually happened to prompt this law. Great. And I'm glad right. that it was a Shrek joke in September 2018. Yeah. I'm glad we got there. You know, you put enough monkeys in a room and they're just going to tell Shrek jokes. Man, I watched I watched the Shrek movie while playing Destiny this week and uh, that was... <laughs> I like that I say the Shrek movie. I could have just said I watched Shrek. The Shrek movie. <laughs> Shrek the movie. Oh, we watched... In case y'all were uncertain. Are we watching yeah. the Shrek tonight boys let's let's shrek on over to the last segment that's me i object over to the next segment oh so you approve yes okay i think there's another word we can use to say that next time but we'll figure that out later all right so this comes from uh a tumblr blog titled one time i dreamt oh no Oh, have you heard of this one, Sam? <laughs> oh, I follow this blog. One time I dreamt it sends out some shit sometimes. Y'all, and y'all didn't tell me about it? I've just been in the dark on the Minecraft dream forum this whole time. <laughs> scavenging while y'all have been on easy street. No, dude. The best part about it is if you just like, if you don't catch the URL, it they like type it out as if this is something that actually happened yeah, no, to someone they, and it throws you for a loop. Like you have to, the, re, the URL is one time I dreamt and you have to read that and then read the thing. So okay. you miss it. Gotcha. Yeah. You miss it every time. One time I dreamt I was in a clothing store similar to Hot Topic. Oh. But instead of normal clothing sizes, the sizes had names like, you gonna come at me or what? <laughs> Almost there. I can try to put this on you, but you won't like it. And <laughs> damn right, you're not going to like it. Instead of the sizes being written on the tags, whenever you walked within a meter or so of a piece of clothing, an obnoxious, disembodied, deep voice would say the name of the size to you and then chuckle in a creepy way. And that's, <laughs> and that's the end of the dream. <laughs> this is... This is like I the can worst. Put this on you. This is the worst video game ever. <laughs> this is the worst ASMR. <laughs> Y'all know when you go through like a menu, yeah, and a voice yeah. like says all the options on the menu as you click on them, yeah. So you could just scroll mm -hmm. through and it's like start, up, start, uh, you, uh, start. <laughs> That's exactly what this would be. Well, because I imagine a hot topic where we have stacks of shirts where all the sizes are in the stack, so they all just start going off at once. And the shirts are lined up on a wall. <laughs> Hold on, I want I want to try something. I want to try something. Just like make sure your headphones are really good in your ears. I hate what this could be. All right, I'm terrified. I guess I didn't want to live especially today. So. My hands are on the <laughs> ear earphones, so if I have to take them off, I can. <laughs> I could try to put this on you, but you won't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Ew. exactly what it would sound like. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> that sucked. To actually, I can't do. wait. I can't wait for this episode to come out so I can know what that sounds like. It's what? What was one of the options? Like, come at me. Oh yeah. <laughs> come at me. You gonna come at me or what? <laughs> you gonna come at me or what? Damn right, you're not gonna like it. <laughs> you know I had to do it to him. Almost. I hate the one that's almost there. <laughs> almost there. Yeah, almost there is like the most cryptic of all of them because it's like, 
Damn it, it's hard enough to find clothing sizes when it's goddamn numbers. Now it's cryptic ass messages that I can't decipher <laughs> spoken to me by yeah, like now fucking it's Morgan Freeman or something. It, it kind of seems like all these clothing sizes are just tight. Yeah. yeah, like they're all small. They're all the same size. I, I like how they're all you titled know, like the like l- options of difficulty when you play Quake. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like bring it this on. Is straight up hell. Yeah, this is like man. It's like I want to play Wolfenstein, but which d- difficulty do I want to play? Yeah, do I want to play on like, oh, I'm a little baby, or bring it on? I can win. <laughs> or almost, almost there. there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, speaking of how bullshit clothing sizes are, I went to I went shopping for like clothes recently. And I got a shirt from Forever 21. It's the first time I've ever shopped there. And there was a large button-down shirt with like and it had like astronauts and planets and stars on it. And I was like, "Hell yeah." So I got it and I was like, "I've never been I've never not fit into a large. A large has always either been too big for me or fit just fine." So I get home and I try, I put it on and the shirt over my chest and like torso fits, but I'm sitting here having, I was sitting there having to T-pose because the goddamn sleeves were so tight that if I even moved my arms (laughs) in a remotely slight gesture to where like I flexed even slightly just to like try and reach for the doorknob, they would rip. Dude, that is amazing. That makes for a great opportunity. You, you go to M and you just say, hey, babe, you got tickets? And you're just like, uh, to what? To the gun show? And then you just rip them right there. That'd be such a power they're, move. They're, <laughs> That's such big dig energy. Big dig. <laughs> big dick energy. <laughs> big dig. But like, I'm sitting here like in my room T-posing and I'm like, I can't take off the shirt without ripping it. <laughs> So you ripped it. So the shirt's fucked I, up? No, he's still I, wearing it. I, yeah, he's been I'm in it for three days. stuck in it to this day. <laughs> but my thing is, like, I don't get it. It fit my torso just fine, but for some reason, arms not. Sometimes clothes sizes just be on that bullshit. I have a pair of like, size 10 pants that are a little too big for me, but I'm fitting very, like, these size 11s fit me perfect. I don't understand. Weird. I, I don't get it. We need to have, like, a universal size thing for everyone. Because, like, Forever 21 apparently d- designs for guys with, like, torsos like me and then arms like twigs. It's it's baffling. It's very strange. A- especially when you bring numbers into the equation. Yeah. Yeah! And then I, I don't... I know, you know, obviously male and female bodies have different anatomies and stuff, but I don't see why we can't just both use the same the numbers. Sa- because Okay, so here's the yeah. thing. Here's the thing. My favorite, like the, the most effective way of clothes finding is men's pants. That's the best way to fucking do it. Because they just give you the inches of the waist and how long it is. Yeah. In girls' why pants, it's a fucking, fucking do that? number eight. Number ten, <laughs> figure it out, asshole. I must tie. I must tie yeah. six, eight, and ten in dresses. How does that work? How am I three different sizes? I, I don't, don't know. know. Men's Girl, pants are it's easy. Just... It's just twenty-eight inches, thirty-four, thirty-six inches, thirty-seven, whatever the fuck. You... Girls, y'all just gotta guess. You just ah! good luck. You bras, bras are so people who are like shopping for bras is so hard. Me, yeah, maybe it is, but like it's also it's just like. What cup size doesn't make you want to die? And also it says how many inches around the thing is. Yeah. Like 34 inches, 32 inches. The only thing that kind of throws off the the uh, jean sizing is like the type of jeans. Well, like, yeah. I mean, if they're like find, finding like jeans is bullshit. Fit. Well, <laughs> I got good news for you, Sam. Cyan does have what? a denim chart. Oh, yeah. I do actually have a denim chart. That could help you out. I do want to get back to this dream. I think, here's the thing. We're complaining about these real world sizes. What if this dream is the solution? Yeah. What if when you get a, you go near a pair of clothes and it says, you know, oh, it's a little tight, isn't it? (laughs) I don't want a fucking disembodied, deep ass voice throwing shade at me. Yeah, I don't want to laugh at me. All right, all right. What if you can customize it? 
You can customize voice. So it could be like a sexy, like smoky sound of lady. It's like each store maybe. has their own like. I don't like. I don't want. I don't want that because I don't want like a sexy lady voice being like. It looks like you've put on a few pounds since you last went shopping. And I'm like, I fucking know, okay? okay? Uh, but I just imagine, I, I imagine Hot Topic, because uh, that's the store they used as an example. Yeah. I imagine Hot Topic and how small of a store that is. And I always imagine how Hot Topic is on the weekends, fucking packed mm-hmm. with people. Yeah. And there's shirts everywhere. You're never not at oh, least a no. meter away from at least oh, seven shirts at a time. Yeah. And that is sensory overload. Yeah, and there's never not 50 shirts next to each other at any given moment. So like it's just a constant barrage well, this, of noise. This is what I imagine. It the voice only plays in your head. Okay. It's customizable. If you touch the shirt. And here's the thing, with the sizes, it depends on like on how confident you are and how you feel in those clothes so it's like a so it's a it's, an, it's like an evolutionary thing it's we, we well, develop an like generations down we've developed a like evolutionary thing in our brain to be able to look at a shirt and be like i know i won't fit in you in the yeah. same way that like birds look at a frog and they're like you're poisonous and if <laughs> you're looking you're going out and you're looking for a come at me bro shirt yeah then it, perfect you know, that's the size you're going to get. And the, and the clothes conform to your body depending on your oh. confidence on wearing them. This sucks. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you, fuck this. this. <laughs> you have to be confident to look good. <laughs> well, look, you, get a, you, you, see the, you see those jeans are like, yeah, those are going to fit, baby. Or if you're, you know, if you're like, oh, I don't know about those. I don't know. Then they're, they're going to be loose or too tight. And that'll encourage us to be more confident about our our clothing what about if it doesn't quite fit right instead of the voice being like oh you thought it's like it's okay you'll work towards it see i like that like too. after if you a don't couple, the, the, you don't have to change your voice, appearance to i want fit the society. voice to validate me yeah you look beautiful the way you are you do not need to conform to society standards yeah. the voice can yeah. be validating it could be inspiring it could even be demeaning if that's how you get your motivation so we all just like have a self trainer chip in our brain yes exactly <laughs> okay i feel like that would fix a lot of motivation problems in a lot of our society I think that's just like the cure for it <laughs> yeah and maybe like you look at a piece of clothing and your voice is like oh that's not gonna fit your fashion aesthetic and you're like oh thank you i have no idea what my fashion aesthetic hey, is hey brett yeah i have i have something to tell you yeah what's that you know when you're just like exist you know doing anything yeah and there's that voice inside your head that's talking to you i think that's the voice you're referring no because the voice in my head doesn't know anything about fashion well you, you know feel me well maybe if you were more confident well, maybe you're right, Zion. Like, may, you, I think if I can just go shopping, I can my, by myself be like, oh, I'm not going to fit into that. I'll fit into that. I can do that. But I don't need a chip of a dude to do it for me. <laughs> I don't need some deep voice that laugh at me. <laughs> I think that's just like your inner voice. And you're just telling people yeah. like, hey, you should change your inner voice to not be self-deprecating and instead use it to motivate yourself. Hmm. We don't need a government chip or evolution to do that. We just need self-love and drinking water and doing yoga. And a good support system. And just stop being sad. (laughs) And just stop stop being being anxious. Hey, guys. Just stop being sad. Have you tried that yet? Just smile. Just stop. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) And a perfect ending for the podcast. (laughs) Yep. Thanks for pushing my entire mic away. (laughs) I just, I accidentally hit the mic and then I just kept pushing it away from Cyan. Thank you for listening to the podcast. We are, you can find us anywhere podcasts are found. That includes Libsyn, iTunes, uh, CastBox. Whoa, what the fuck is that? Wait, what? Yeah. That's a new one. That is the number one app on Android for podcasts. Ah, shit. This is not an ad. This is not sponsored, even though it, it sure feels sounds sponsored. Like it. I got a good sponsoring voice, I've been told. We should have just pretended it was a sponsor, honestly. And see if they pay us proactive, like retroactively. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
and you can find us you can contact us on facebook we have a gmail we have a discord server thank you mindyful for being the one third party person on that server <laughs> maybe someday we'll get a second person <laughs> we'll see hey we got jay yeah we, we got, got we got jay slim yeah but he practically made the thing i mean he's not a True. third unbiased third party you know he well he's basically our boss on the discord he yeah. owns us, basically. <laughs> he kind of is, huh? He can he can just delete us at his whim. He's like our unhired manager who just kind of decided he was going to be our manager. And we were just kind of like, oh, well, I guess we can't fight back or you'll fire us. Also, shout out to our producer. <laughs> shout out to our producer, Al Cabones. Yeah, shout out to your yeah. producer and also dad, I guess, but my brother too. Yeah, it's Sian's brother yeah. and Sam and I's dad and also kind of Sian's dad as well. And, and also he, our producer. We finally talked him into getting an Instagram. Yeah. Yep. And he spelled his own name wrong. So that's cool. Isn't that so Al Cabones of him, though? It's just like, it's ironic. It's it's funny and ironic. Yeah. Since the S Dude. should be a Z to show how cool and rad he is. He didn't want to, like, flex. You know, he's he's very humble. Yeah. yeah. He, he was he was keeping it tame. Yeah, exactly. He, want, he didn't want to take the spotlight away from us. He just, you know. Yeah. He wanted it to all be about thoughts on a... Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't want to take any of that attention because he could and he would. Yeah, he absolutely. He has that star power mm-hmm. for sure. I think he already did though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure his first post has more likes than ours. <laughs> mm. That's fine. Whatever. Whatever. Hopefully, people who like Alcum Bones can come to the podcast and take a listen. And also bring a towel. Yeah. Which and you also maybe I guess bring for a towel. My final words is redacted. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to? So you did a very killer Carl no, impression no, before the no, show. Can no, you leave that no, to like end no, us off on? None of that. Nope. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> Great. We'll see you on the right. Sam Impression <laughs> Podcast, <laughs> where it's just 30 minutes of Sam freestyle impressions. Our next episode is going to be Daddy. No, that'll be fun. Our next episode is us, and we just hold up title cards. That's like the, end of the episodes. Cards. And oh, to he, Sam, and nope. he has to impersonate them. Yeah, on That's the spot. The and then, like, I'm pressing the stop recording button now. <laughs> <laughs>